Well, fantastic, you have a working application. We covered a lot, so let's, let's review everything we did. First, we created our IDE and set it up with all the plugins so we can get colors, we can write code in a nice application called an IDE, an integrated development environment. We created our only source file, main.elm, and saved it as an Elm file in the source directory. If you run Elm in it, it'll automatically create an Elm JSON for you and the source directory if it doesn't exist. It'll give you all the libraries you need, install them for you, and give you basic metadata about your application to know that it's an Elm application. If it does have libraries, it'll put it in Elm stuff. When you compile, it'll install any additional libraries that it discovers from import. And so that's why you see Elm stuff appear once you run Elm make. And we have the basics of an application, which is just a main function with a browser sandbox that returns all the values it needs. And that's all you need is the main Elm with a module of the name and what functions it expose and main. Main has the basic Elm architecture of three functions. The init, what is my initial model? What, what's the value I start with? The view showing on the screen. It takes a model as the first and only parameter. How do I, how do I draw that? And update. Update is a reducer function usually. And so when somebody wants to change data, how does that data change? That's up to you. You tell me the update function. I'll give you the message. You tell me what the new immutable data should be. So if we go to init, we just started off with value 52. Then we added first name to be silly. And then later we added the number to add based on the text field. So when you type in the text field, we want to store that value. And it's always a zero if it can't parse it. But if it did work, it'll do it. That way it doesn't affect our equation. Because if you add zero to a number, you don't actually affect it at all. The view, we just created a really simple UI. We just have a div tag that has no special attributes or styles or anything. It's just text that shows the current model value and we convert it to a string using from it. And so that'll show it right there. And a div for spacers to put, make sure that these two sit below it. We have an input tag, which is this text field right here. And anytime you type in it, it's gonna send this changed add text method. Because this type, is defined up top with a string or a type definition, that means that it's gonna get a string. So when you type in the text field, it's gonna send that string along with it. We have a button with text of add. So when you click that, it'll fire off the add message. And the add message doesn't really have any parameters. It says, hey, I added, hello. You handle those changes inside of the update function. So if we go to update function, we log some things out just to see how things happen over time. It makes it easier to visualize how your program's happening. And we do a simple case statement that returns one of two values. If you type in add, it's gonna add whatever the current number to add is based on what's in the model currently. And that's changed based on typing this. Whenever you type, it's gonna change the number to add. If it parses it out successfully, it'll be that number. Otherwise, if you type in text that isn't a number, it'll just give you zero. And so we've created our own function to basically do a case on the maybe. To int is not like our from string down here. If you look in our view, this from int will always take some integer and convert it to a string. There's no problem with converting known ints to strings. There's no maybes to return from that. It's always going to work. But you can't guarantee what the user types and you can't guarantee what a string is. It may or may not be a number. And so we're going to get a maybe out of that. So we have to case. If it's just and it parsed correctly, great. Go ahead and snag off the value for it and give us that. Otherwise, if it's nothing, return zero. So we can always guarantee that we're getting a number back and that number to add is always gonna be a number that we can use in math. And so that's the basics of the message. And so that, ladies and gentlemen, is your first basic LMAP.